You'll have to excuse me if I sound like I'm trying to do a Barry White impersonation. I have, uh, I have a man flu, so I have a medical team and two ambulances waiting outside because we all know how serious man flu is for, uh, for the male population. I'm delighted to be here today. Um, and I also want to commend Simon and uh, wish him well on uh, his future ventures and thank him sincerely for everything he's delivered to the EBU. Um, I'm also delighted in terms of I had a look at the kind of topics that we're looking at and you know Hans mentioned it and I am would I would consider myself a content person and 10 or 15 years ago that was quite simple I was a journalist writing stories, I was a producer producing stories, I was an editor editing stories. Being a content person has become an awful lot more complicated. As you become a senior manager, you move a little bit further away from content. I would often, uh, when I talk about this, get people who say to me, an international organization like the EBU, how can that be a content organization? And yet it absolutely is, for me, a content organization. And it's very important that we start to define ourselves much more as a content organization. We have 76 members in 53 countries. We invest 18 billion a year, our members, in European content. 15 billion of that goes into original content. That dwarfs everybody else. 87% of what we broadcast is original European content. So content is at the heart of what we do. And even if you look at the EBU, and sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm dealing now with sometimes with perceptions of the EBU, and you will have a particular perception Others will see it as a, a, a lobbying organization, a representative body. For me, the EBU is about content. And it's about providing content and sharing content, be that in news as we do, be it in music exchange, be it in th events like Eurovision. It's about training, educating, going out there to broadcasters and media organizations showing them or bringing together groups who can show them how to restructure themselves digitally to provide better content. It's about going to Brussels and defending the rights of public service media to exploit its contents. And increasingly important, the rights of public service media to be in the digital space. And this is a really key issue for us and something that I think impacts on all of you as well is that there, there, there are attempts to limit what public service media can do in the, digital, in the digital space. And that effectively for me is cutting off our future. And, and we are out there working with our members trying to make our case in, uh, against those kinds of restrictions. It is also hugely about that we take a leadership role in innovation and technology that delivers content. Again, it's coming back to content and how we deliver and how we help our members deliver the best content possible. This is becoming increasingly difficult. That There is less money. There are political movements, particularly populist movements, uh, growing around Europe that are less sympathetic towards public service generally, but towards public service media in particular. Um, there is technological innovation, which is fantastic, offers such opportunities, but also challenges. There's the rise of OTT platforms. There's the dominance of social media platforms. And also, and, and, and this is something we need to recognize as well, our growing dependence on them. And there was a lot of criticism around the, the latest moves by Facebook in terms of how it's going to prioritize community interactions and downgrade some of the presences on the news feeds. For me, that is going to be a jolt for a lot of our media organizations. It's going to mean a, a change because they've been investing in that. They've had teams together seeing how can they increase their presence on Facebook. For me, it's actually going to be a positive in the long term. You know, this is a world where we, we as media organizations, increasingly, we need partnerships, we need to work together, but we also need to stand on our own two feet. And, and changes in algorithms that we have absolutely no control over, 
and that we want to get more transparency on. And I, I'm, I'm involved in the European Commission Fake News Expert Group, and this is one of the areas that, that I will be putting forward in terms of us looking at is transparency. But we can't, we need, we need to be able to stand on our own two legs. And there is a, a danger of getting a dependency and, and being, being, being brought into the drug of social media access. But again, it showed how a decision somewhere else overnight can fundamentally change our presence in, uh, in, on social media platforms. So all of those kinds of challenges are out there. And, and for me, and it's important, I think, that you hear this from me as a new director general of an organization like the EBU, it is absolutely important and imperative for me that we stay at the forefront of technological innovation that we stay at the forefront of innovation, not just in technology. And, you know, we are looking at trying to bring innovation into everything we do. We are, we are re-examining all of our services from news, what we deliver in the news, what we deliver in music exchange, what we deliver across the board to see what, how can we meet an ever-changing demand? How can we approach that more innovatively? How can we respond to what our members need and through them what their audiences need. And that is a big focus for us at the moment. I think in terms of other things that, that you may or may not be aware of, what the EBU is about and needs to increasingly be about is building bridges between creatives and, to, and technology, such as the new broadcaster building initiatives where we guide members in terms of digital shift, innovation strategies, and we have that access. And, and sometimes in the EBU, we underestimate that. We have access to all of those broadcasters at the highest level. We know and we go out and we work with their teams in terms of how they're structuring themselves digitally, what's working, what isn't. And we need to increasingly become that resource. And beyond that, beyond just a, a, an information resource, we need to be able to access best practice for people who are at different levels of development, as a lot of our members are. And this is something that I, I believe in passionately and that I want to see us expand more into. We also need proof of concepts between EBU and members. We had the VRT uh, EBU Live IP Studio, which I, you know, I've, I've seen and is fantastic. We've had the UHD Montreux Jazz Festival, uh, which I could sit down and watch all night. We've had creating industry open standards, roadmaps, uh, guide members in investment decisions. IP Studio I've mentioned, security, an increasingly important and concerning area for our members. Co-developments, prototyping between us and members, personalization, recommendation engines. These are all things that we're looking at. Cloud-based news production. Uh, we also need to be open to alliances, even with those, you know, that we will sometimes criticize uh, for other reasons. And we are very open for business in terms of alliances, in terms of working with the industry, in terms of accessing best practice. And I think we also need to look ahead, and Simon has mentioned it, in terms of, in terms of AI, augmented reality particularly, and also 5G, which we will be attending the digital commissioners. Uh, new group on that, which I think is meeting in the next couple of months. So all of this we need to do in partnership. We can't do it on our own. We are open to that. We're open to looking at why some partnerships in the past have worked and frankly why others haven't. Try and learn from that experience. And we also need to apply that culture of innovation across the board in terms of everything we do. And, and communicate it to staff in the, as, a, as an absolute priority for the EBU. Again, I say to you that I am absolutely committed to that. I think events like this are fantastic, and I, I commend and thank Hans and his team for putting it together. I think it is important that we all learn about trends. It's important that we share user cases in terms of innovation. It's important that we open debate criticize, criticize each, each other and ourselves. And it's also important that you feel that you've gotten a sense of value out of the next few days. And I think this is a fantastic event. I will remain totally committed to it. But more importantly, the EBU will be totally committed to 
innovation, to technology, to working with the members, but also with the wider industry. We can't be too insular. And we do have access to some of the biggest media organizations in Europe. We are a cohesive gel for a lot of those organizations on different projects. And we want to hear from you and we want to work with you in terms of how we expand that, develop that, make ourselves better at it. And, and, and develop things that not just help our members, but also help the industry as a whole, because we have a responsibility there. So Hans and his team and everyone will get my full support. I'm totally committed to this and I, I wish you a, a, a really enjoyable and educational and challenging conference. Thank you. <laughs>